Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. One of the most common questions I get asked is, do you do reptile shows? Well, as you probably have figured out from the title of this video, I don't do reptile shows. I wanted to go over the reasons I have that I don't do reptile shows, as well as say some of my thoughts on the whole reptile show concept. If you're new here, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So be sure to hit subscribe if you want to learn all about keeping and breeding these wonderful animals. First off, I just wanted to say that although I don't do reptile shows, I'm not completely against them. I just think that there are a number of concerns with reptile shows as they currently are being conducted that would preclude me from participating either as a vendor or as a buyer slash participant. I want to go over some of these concerns with you and then I wanted to give my vision for a reptile show that hopefully would be a better experience for all parties involved. The first and foremost reason I don't do reptile shows is that it would subject my animals to a lot of stress which would have a negative impact on their health. Just to get to a reptile show involves quite a bit of travel. You know, so there are some local and regional shows that will probably be a few hours drive by car, but then there are also some national shows that would be several days drive by car. So the reptiles would have to be in a small container for a long time just in transit to the show and then of course when they're at the show it also would involve being in a substandard uh, housing condition which would lead to stress so at reptile shows snakes are commonly kept in these plastic deli style containers and i actually use these for shipping so uh, I'll frequently use this size container for shipping my baby boas. I put some aspen and some paper towel for hiding places in it. But the animal is in this container for about 15 to 20 hours on average when it gets shipped by FedEx priority overnight. Um, reptiles that are at reptile shows, I've heard about vendors that actually will keep the animals in these containers even when they're not at the shows. They just come home for a weekend, they stay in here, and then they're off to the next show. So it's really a substandard housing condition, and it's definitely not in the snake's best interest to be in this kind of a container. When the animals are at the show, they're also under a lot of stress because they're basically on display as a sales item. So I've seen vendors that have this nice display case Little, little compartments for each of the snakes and there's this big light illuminating it so all of the customers can see the snakes perfectly and while this might be okay for selling snakes it's really not good for their health to be under that kind of stress and then I've seen it where snakes are being passed around from person to person and you know some of these prospective buyers may not know how to handle a snake properly or give it the best um, handling I've even seen instances where Prospective buyers have the containers and they're kind of shaking them and tapping on them. So it's really, really stressful for the snakes to be in this kind of um, condition. Another issue with the environment of a show is that there's a large potential for disease transmission. So you have thousands of reptiles that are under stress. Their immune system might be compromised from the stress and they're very close together in close proximity. So if there's any kind of virus or disease, there's a very good chance it could spread from one animal to another. And we've all heard about the horrors of things like arena virus and IBD among others. But I think probably one of the most common uh, ailments that you can get at a show are mites. And I've gone on about mites in several of my other videos. They're really a scourge. They're becoming more and more common in the reptile industry and possibly more and more resistant to the treatments used to get rid of them. And in fact, the last time I went to a reptile show about five years ago, I brought home a boa that had mites. And in fact, I'm not even so sure that the boa had mites as much as the mites came back from the reptile show with me and or the boa because there was no sign of mites on this boa. The boa was in quarantine for quite a while uh, before I actually saw the mites. And so I think that there's a pretty good possibility that the seller that I bought the boa from was not responsible for the mites. It was just the fact 
that we were in this environment where there were lots of mites. And when you have, you know, lots and lots of vendors, no matter how well they're screened, there's no way you can prevent mites from coming in there. So if you do go to a reptile show, just be very, very cautious about your precautions to not get mites. You wanna completely change your clothes after you come back, shower, do all that. You know, anything that you buy at a reptile show, you should treat as though it already has a mite infestation. The second reason I don't do reptile shows has to do with my own bandwidth. So I have a full-time job. I have my boas, of course. I have to put a lot of time into taking care of them. I'm filming these YouTube videos. I have my family. I have my other pets. I have a house I need to maintain. So I'm already pretty swamped as far as time. So to drop everything and to go to a reptile show, which might require at least several days to a week, you know, to travel out to the reptile show, leave everything else behind, that really would not be possible even if I, there were other reasons for me to do the reptile show. So just in terms of my own resources, it's just not really possible. In addition, I don't have any of the infrastructure that would be needed for a reptile show, like the display cases and the lights and all those other types of things, as well as reptile shows cost money in terms of not just the travel for the gas and you know, staying in hotels, things like that, but also in terms of paying the fee for the table. So if I did that, I would have to pass the charges on and more expensive snake prices. So it really wouldn't make sense for me to do a reptile show just because of my own uh, limited bandwidth and resources. The third reason I don't do reptile shows is I'm able to find new homes for all of my baby boas just fine through other means. And primarily these are internet based. So of course I'm filming these YouTube videos so you guys can keep on top of all of my breeding projects and my availability of babies. I also have a Facebook page, Brian Boas, with lots of pictures of my boas and I post regular updates on the breeding. Um, I also sell through some of the online classifieds like faunaclassifieds.com. And I found that I'm able to have a really good interaction with people either through instant messaging, through comments on these YouTube videos, as well as through um, emails and through telephone calls. So certainly if, I, if a buyer wants to talk to me you know, in person, I'm all, always available to chat with them. If they just want to email, that's fine too. So I'm able to exchange all the information necessary with the buyers uh, just through these uh, internet-based mechanisms. I've also found that at least right now with locality boas, it's super easy to sell the animals really quickly if you're dealing with quality animals and you provide a positive customer experience. So I haven't found that you know, the lack of any face-to-face -face contact with my customers has any impact on my selling ability. And so far it's been you know, fine as far as interacting with the customers. Yes, I, certainly it would be great to see people face-to-face. -face. And you know, in the current COVID era, we can't even see uh, pretty much anybody face-to-face. -face. But just in general, face-to-face -face communication is always the best way. But in the absence of face-to-face -face communication, I found that technology like uh, instant messaging and uh, Skype and all these other solutions is perfectly satisfactory uh, as far as interacting with uh, BOA customers. Although I've never done a show as a seller, I imagine that what I'm working with is probably more specialized than most of the typical show customers are looking for. So at the shows that I've been to, and these include local and regional type shows, I really didn't see much as far as locality boas. Most of what I saw were ball python morphs and then different types of geckos. These were probably at least you know, two thirds of the animals at these shows. Locality boas are a little bit more specialized. You know, someone goes to a show wanting a boa, they're probably just looking for like a pet boa. And you know, sometimes they have like a normal you know, pet quality boa, but they're probably not looking to get a uh, more expensive locality specific boa. Of course, at the larger shows like the Tinley Park show, um, there are hundreds and hundreds of vendors and there are much more highly specialized people going to these shows. So 
you know, I would imagine that there'd be more people looking for a specialty thing, but of course, going to a show like that would require even more in terms of the travel and the bandwidth. So basically, because of the bandwidth that it would require to go to one of these larger shows, as well as the negative consequences for the health of my animals, I don't have any plans to do a show at any time in the future. The fourth main category of reasons why I don't do reptile shows have to do with some issues that I have just that are inherent to the whole concept of a reptile show. So one of these is that I think it over commoditizes reptiles. It makes them into purely a commodity that's to be bought and sold. And I admit that as a breeder of reptiles who sells reptiles, there's some element of that that's just inherent. I mean, we are breeding these animals to sell them so that we can bring in money to maintain our collections and to perpetuate the hobby. So I understand that. But when you have animals that are being bought and sold in an environment where sometimes the priority is on the selling rather than on the welfare of the animal, that really causes some issues. I've seen uh, quite often that people will go to reptile shows and they might have an idea about what they want to buy, but then they see something else that looks really cool and you know they need to get this. So they end up buying a lot of things on impulse that they're not really prepared for. So it's really not the best way for somebody to enter into a, you know, a new pet owner. In addition, the reptile shows will uh, incentivize for sellers to sell their reptiles you know as quickly as possible because the show is limited so the dollar values of animals are typically dropped as the end of the show gets uh, closer and I've heard about people going to these shows and on the last day they buy normal ball pythons these are just animals that are largely a byproduct of a morph project and they can buy them for as little as $5 a piece. And I even heard about from one of my customers who bought a boa from me that he goes to these shows to buy the $5 ball pythons and he feeds them to his king cobra. And that just kind of really, you know, disgusted me because um, you can say what you want about ball pythons. I know boa people love their boas, but they are a cool reptile. And I remember as a kid, I would have you know, killed for a ball python because there really weren't a whole lot of reptiles at that time. So to hear about these poor normal ball pythons that have been just reduced to a foodstuff for a, another snake, it's just, it doesn't really sit right with me. In addition, the shows will often be held in late summer or early fall, you know, to time with the appearance of lots of baby colubrids and other snakes. But unfortunately, the snakes might not be ready to go at that point. You know, as you know, boas are typically born in late summer, early fall, but then they need a few months to become established. So the timing of the shows for boa keepers is really not opportune. And I've even heard about some breeders that will sell boas as soon as they're born without even establishing them, just so they can sell them at these shows. Another thing about reptile shows that doesn't really sit right with me is there's always a circus-like atmosphere both inside of the show hall as well as outside in the parking lot. And I'm not going to get into the specifics, but if you've been to a reptile show lately, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. So as you know, there are groups of people who oppose ownership of reptiles and they want to have laws passed to limit ownership of reptiles. So to see a reptile show where people are behaving in a certain fashion is giving ammunition to the people who want to take away our rights to keep these beautiful animals. And I think that reptile shows, unfortunately, are contributing to the general public's negative impression of reptile keepers in general. Another unfortunate common occurrence at reptile shows are the theft of animals. And this isn't surprising because you have thousands of people and sometimes tens of thousands of reptiles in a relatively small space and it's really cramped and crowded and there's lots and lots of chaos and stuff going on. So it's pretty easy for somebody to grab a uh, deli container containing a snake and just sneak out with it. And this seems to happen at almost every large reptile show. You know, sometimes the, th the thief is caught, sometimes they get away with it. Unfortunately, law enforcement are probably not gonna prioritize theft of snakes. So somebody could pretty easily lose thousands of dollars worth of snakes just 
for you know in a few shoplifting events so another reason why I don't have any desire to sell my animals at a reptile show a lot of this video has been based on my own opinions and experiences so I'd love to hear what you guys think do you go to reptile shows have you mostly had positive or negative experiences at reptile shows so please let me know your opinions about reptile shows in the comment section below the last thing I wanted to discuss in this video is about my vision for what might be a better type of reptile show than the types of reptile shows we see these days. And what's unusual about a reptile show is it's really a reptile sale. When we think about another type of animal show like a dog show or a horse show, this is more of a judge competition where breeders and enthusiasts put on display their finest examples of a type of animal. It can be judged and it's uh, viewed and enjoyed by people who attend the show, but it's not necessarily for sale. It could lead to sales because people see the beautiful animals and they become aware of the breeders and suppliers and then they might get in touch with them to try to get you know an animal from that particular uh, lineage. But you don't buy dogs at a dog show. You just look at the beautiful dogs and then you go up to the breeder if you're interested in a dog of that type. And I think this might be better for reptiles as well because you know breeders could bring just a few of their top quality animals. They could you know handle them with kid gloves during the transport so they're under minimal amount of stress. The animals could be seen and appreciated by the public. You know there's not this pressure to buy things and sell things and ultimately it might lead to a better appreciation of reptiles and it might also lead to publicity for the breeders because they have their finest animals on display um, there could be ribbons or you know prizes for different for different um, categories you know in a general reptile show there might be like the best boa constrictor the best ball python the best corn snake or there even might be the best red tail boa the best locality boa best morph boa categories like that an advantage of this type of show is it would also allow for a lot of positive social interactions between different breeders and between the breeders and potential future customers that are interested in the animals. So I think this is a type of reptile show I would be more interested in participating in if there ever is such a reptile show. So let me know what you think. Would you go to a reptile show where reptiles were not for sale, but rather just on display, where you could see the finest in captive bred reptiles and interact with the breeders? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd also love to hear your experiences at reptile shows, both the good and the bad. Well, I hope this was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments about boas, please feel free to shoot me a line. Thank you for watching and enjoy your boas.